Hello friends. So in today's session, the topic for the day is let us discuss. So this is not a topic as such. I've created a separate playlist in my channel where I, apart from my academics, I'll be posting informations on various diseases, disorders ranging from a common cold till HIV and also the different various scientists who have invented and discovered things related to the science related to biology. Alright and yes, so before moving on to this session, so if you didn't subscribe our channel, please do subscribe and click the bell icon for daily updates. So before moving on, so we have to know two important concepts, okay? So the difference between an invention and a theory. So how many of us know the difference, the correct difference between invention and theory? So most of us tend to confuse between these two. Who is a discoverer and who is an inventor? Right? So very simple example. So discovery, for example, a thing is already is placed. Okay. In other terms, what is discovery means? There's a particular thing. Okay. It is already being pleasant, present in the same place. All right. So, and then someday a scientist goes and finds it out. It's called discovery. In simple means, there's an apple. So you can just imagine, as I tell you, you can imagine there's a rainbow colored apple. So far, nobody has found a rainbow colored apple. And to make it more interesting, we'll go on to Amazon forest. Okay. So in Amazon forest, there is a, a, a rainbow colored apple. And some person gets in the forest and he finds this a rainbow colored apple and now this is called as discovery because this rainbow colored apple is already been there so so many years humans didn't find it out suddenly one day somebody finds it so somebody finds something which is already been there is called as discovery now then what is invention now what is invention so it's finding something new for example Okay, now the coat of a rainbow colored apple is very thick, so we can never peel it. So some person goes and find a unique peeler to peel its outer coat. And now this is called as invention because this involves much of his cognitive knowledge, cognitive perception, where he analyzes how this apple looks like, how tough the coat of this apple and he finds his own peeler to peel the coat of this apple. So yes, so biologically finding, discovering DNA is a discovery. Alright, and then you find a sequencer to sequence this DNA is invention. So hope you would have understood this concept. And yes, today we'll go to, we'll see an interesting personality, Robert Hooke. So, he is the father of cell theory. So, how many of us know who is Robert Hooke? So, we'll move on to his biography. So, Robert Hooke was born in England in the year 1735. So, it is in the 18th century. So, he was a great physicist and a mathematician, which means he was good at maths and physics. So, when he was in his early 30s, so what happened was, so he, he did a research in physics. So that's how he came up with the law of elasticity, which is also called as Hooke's law. Yes, I have my hairband. So what he found was the amount of force applied is directly proportional to the elasticity of an object. For example, I'm applying, this is a hairband and I'm applying my force, right? And look how does it stretch. And now this is my minimal force so that the band is elongated minimally. Now what happens if I apply my fullest force to this band? So now the force I apply is proportional to what is proportional to the amount the band is stretched. So that was his discovery. And then he came upon with uh, in establishing a book. So he published a book called micrographia so micrographia which means something which is very tiny graphia means drawing so tiny 
drawings. So what he did was, he, he observed various samples under microscope. It could be water, it could be anything. So one day he came up with a small piece of a cork tree. Okay, so we call it as sliver of a cork. Okay, so he came up with a small piece of cork tree and he observed under the microscope. So in the microscope, he observed rectangular boxes which are closely attached with each other this way so he was wondering and he drew it in a note and then he found okay these rectangular boxes look so empty like an empty room where do monks live and it looks really scary so that's why he named it as cells so this was an interesting fact on cell discovery. So cell wasn't a new term. So cell was the other word for prison, right? So that's what he kept it as cells because it is look like a prison which is closely attached box rooms which are closely placed. So that's when he came up with the discovery of cells. So in the next session, we will see some more important and interesting scientists. Thank you.